Thank you. Helen was talking about her fiddle a while ago, being the very first one. This, uh, I've been building guitars for uh, over 50 years up there. I have a tiny little shop, which if y'all ever venture that far back in the sticks up there, you'd be certainly welcome to visit. I, I love having people come in there and I'll show you the, the side bender and the, the main pocket knife that I do make necks with and all that sort of thing. You know, you're always welcome to visit and I'd love to have you. And uh, to, but I was talking about this old guitar is out of, uh, I've made 745 guitars. Now, I think in, uh, in that little tiny little shop. And this one's number 52. It's about 40 years old. And uh, it's one that just, it's sort of a nothing fancy at all, but I just happened to keep it and, and played it all those years. And it's worn and, you know, looks terrible and, you know, worn real bad, but I like, I like that old guitar. It's just the one I always go to play. And I can't afford those nice new ones like Helen's got. <laughs> Hers is number 700. She mentioned that a while ago, I think, and it's made out of local, nothing too fancy either. You know, it's made out of local grown walnut wood and the sprees come off of the mountain up there where we live. And, and uh, so it's pretty much a local, locally grown wood guitar. It's yeah. got a beautiful Appalachian spruce top. So any of you guitar geeks out there who want to come take a look at it, either at intermission or after the show, Come, come check it out, it's wavy, and it's, it's really a, a very special top, I think. And Helen even got to help pick that out. We, we clamped three of them in a vise and stick a tuning fork to them. I'd never done that before, with all that guitar making, years of it. I'd never tried doing that, and stick a tuning fork to it, and it seemed to be the loudest one of all of them. See, that's the one I want. I don't know if that and had anything to do with anything. It, you know, some of them, they'd be loud up here, but nothing down here, but this one was really balanced with the tuning fork. So, so. you do all sorts of tricks like that, you know, to, uh, you know, to find, to try to get the best tone and sound out of guitars. And I always, people are always asking me, you know, how in the world do you make those guitars? And I mentioned that pocket knife, I still use that a lot. I shape necks, especially up here at the head and the heel, and to get it to feel right in my hand, I, I, I sat there and whittle it with a pocket knife. That's what I do. And I used to have to do that because it's all I had. And uh, I still do that, but I always, people ask me, how do you make those guitars? And I said, you gotta get good wood. You get a good spruce top and mahogany, rosewood, walnut, whatever you make the back and sides out of. And, uh, and that good quality wood and that good sharp whittling knife and you just cut off everything. It don't look like a guitar. <laughs> and that, that makes it simple enough so I can do it. So, so it's pretty, pretty cool and I love doing that. I work in that shop every day just about that I'm not out playing and, and, and I really love it and love to have visitors so if you come by. Not all at the same time, the shop ain't that big, but, <laughs> but you'd be welcome to come by sometime if you want to see it. Now, also, something that's a thrill to me, now I have a daughter who has taken up the art of making guitars, and she's doing wonderful, doing good. She uh, makes better at it than I do because she's a better business person, you know. <laughs> but she makes gorgeous guitars, and, and she's got her own shop up in Asheville now. And, uh, and she uh, comes up and works in my shop. Every, she has to do her finish work up there. And, and I get, to, I get to work with her a little bit every once in a while, which is a thrill to me. And I'm real proud of her. She went off to all those years, you know, she'd come in the shop at Christmas sometimes and get pretty wood and make Christmas presents and stuff for people, cutting boards and stuff. And hadn't ever shown any interest in guitar making at all. Until a few years ago, she went off to Vermont Law School and got a degree in environmental law and, and uh, she come in the shop there one day and she'd seen what my guitars bring on eBay and stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, she wanted to know if I'd make her a guitar she could put on eBay and sell to pay her student loan. <laughs> and I said, well, of course I probably would, but it said, it'd be cool if you made it yourself. And all she fussed about that, but, but she said, well, she'd try it. And she come in there and started, she's a wonderful artist. I knew she could do it with the her work with her hands and everything. And, and uh, she got started and come in about halfway through that guitar 
and said, you know, I can't believe this, but I'm having a good time. And that, that was music to my ears, and, and uh, she took to it and got that guitar. It's one of my guitars that she did an absolute beautiful job. I gave her my best wood and my best instruction, and she did a gorgeous job, and somebody gave her $25,000 for it. And so she's been into it ever since. You know. she, don't, <laughs> she, don't, uh, she don't get that for all of them, for sure, but, but uh, she does beautiful work, and I'm real proud of her. And uh, so... You probably could visit her. I don't know what she'd think if I told a bunch of people to come to her shop, but, <laughs> but she probably wouldn't care as long as you don't come to all at the same time. And uh, got a song? Well, I guess I should have been thinking. Yeah, been, I've been running my mouth all that time. There. Well, give you time to figure out a good song to do, you know. Well, why don't we do uh, your Johnny Cash? Okay, I like that one. Wayne was invited to do this song with Roseanne Cash several years ago in New York at the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art because she had played at his festival the year before and, and uh, they kind of took to each other musically. And, um, <laughs> and so he learned this song to do with her and then uh, there was bad storms in New York, and the, all flights in and out of the city were canceled for a period of about 36 hours, so he, he couldn't get there. So I, I learned the song so he can do it. In a little cabaret in a South Texas border town sat a boy and his guitar, and the people came from miles around, and all the girls from there to Austin We're slipping away from home And putting jewelry in hock To take the trip Go and listen To the little dark-haired boy Who played the Tennessee flat-top box And he would play But give him his guitar And he'd be happy all the time And all the girls From nine to ninety Were snapping fingers, patting toes Begging him don't stop hypnotized And fascinated By the little dark-haired boy who played Tennessee flat-top box he would play Never saw him round, he vanished like the breeze. They forgot him in the little town, and all the girls still dreamed about him and hung around the cabaret until the doors were locked. Then one day, on the hit parade, was a little dark haired boy who played Tennessee flat top box.
Well, I'll do that tune for Dr. Ely and his family. Said they'd just been down to Memphis where, where all that Sun Records, where that stuff started, and that lick right there. That's probably where that started from. I'd all say. right. And, uh, I'll play a little bit of thumb picking right there. A little bit of the Cannonball Blues. I learned this from Maybell Carter all the time. in the middle of that. <laughs> no, I think Jeremy was just giving the audience an opportunity to hear how good those Henderson guitars sound acoustically. <laughs> well, no, I got afraid he may be doing something out there. I don't know. But hope not. In fact, this is probably not the best time to brag on Jeremy, but Jeremy is a phenomenal sound person. <laughs> And it really does make a difference. Thank you. Do a couple more and take a little break. Or All right. Getting pretty, pretty close.
Well, we might uh, have time to maybe do another tune. It's getting, uh, I guess, up toward the middle of the middle of the show. They said to play a set and then take a little break and then play another one. And hope you'll stick around and we'll play the rest of the tunes we know when we when we come come back. And, and uh, we've had a great time for you, and really appreciate y'all so much for coming out and uh, making us feel wonderful. And uh, that's over music like that, that's, that's really good. So uh, for this tune, before we take a break here, it'd be way cool. I've got my, my brand new Red Sox cap. I found the most of them's covered up with dust and everything, so I've got a new one on tonight. So that's, that's pretty cool, break in. And I've always been a big baseball fan of any, any team, usually. And, and uh, Especially you... any team that's not the Yankees. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my Red Sox cat always offends a few Yankees fans. That's all right. They'll get over that. I, I like to watch him play too. But uh, the if you go to a game and stay seven and a half innings, you'll hear this tune right here that I want to pick for you. And I'm hoping that you all sing it. There's some wonderful acoustics in here, and you got great sound and and uh, and. I would love to hear you do the ball game song. And I'll, I'll pick through it, and you all, I'd hope you all sing. Do it just two times in a row, same thing, because it usually gets louder and better the second time. <laughs> and uh, after, after you get done singing, I'll speed it up and make a guitar tune out of the rest of it. Then we'll take a little break and hope you'll come back after intermission. So here's your part. Let me hear you good and loud. I always call this tune nothing to it and I'll try to play it.
Thank you. I talked to a fellow at intermission there that uh, knew about the Louder Milk family. That was actually the Leuven brothers. That was their name. But I told him I know a, a tune written by a fellow named Louder Milk, John D. Louder Milk. He was usually a songwriter, but he, he wrote uh, an instrumental tune. And uh, I guess uh, Doc and Chet Adkins made it famous, but it was actually written by this guy, one called Wendy and Orm. I'll see if you can do that. Remember the chords of that one? Some of by them the, anyway. By the third round, I'll have it. Don't worry. So much tune called Windy and Warm, an uh, actual thumb picking tune. Got a song? Are you tired of me, darling? No, no, not yet at all. <laughs> but, uh, oh, the, oh, the Carter family tune. Tell 
only could you live life over Would you make it otherwise Are you tired of me, my darling Answer only with your eyes From these cheeks you once felt fair Do you think I've grown cold-hearted With the passing of the years Tell me, could you live life over? Would you make it otherwise? Are you tired of me, my darling? Answer only with your eyes Answer only with your eyes Thank you. Feel like fiddling? Somebody? Well, okay. While you're getting your fiddle up, somebody asked me if I would tell a, the story about a Usually some of these stories I tell have a, you know, a line at the end or something like if this is absolutely a true story. He asked me to tell about when the, I sold my first guitar that I got very much money for anything. And uh, back in, it is my number seven guitar. And I inlaid abalone shells. It looked, resembled a Martin D45. It had pearl inlaid everywhere on the sides, back, and and I'd cut every bit of those grooves with my pocket knife, you know, which is, a, I don't know how in the world I did that with as hard as it is just to make one with when you've got routers and things. But uh, I had that old guitar, it's number seven, and I was proud of it. It's the best guitar I had at the time, and I'd go down and spend the evenings with my granny after my grandpa passed on and for, a, for a while until she got used to staying by herself, and I'd take that guitar down there and pick of it at night and one evening, afternoon, or you know, right before dark, the, the local moonshiner fella came in. And he was, his name was Henderson, and we was some akin to him, and, and we, you know, we knew what he did and that kind of thing, but we wasn't worried about him or anything, but he had a stranger with him. And uh, we was worried about him because we figured hanging out with the moonshiner, he had to be some kind of a crook, you know. And me and my granny both was worried because we didn't know him or anything. And he, he had heard about my guitar, that uh, he wanted to see it. And, uh, and even though I was uh, scared of him, I did appreciate him bragging on my guitar. He really liked it and played it and, and made me feel real good. And he said, uh, you know, I'd like to have this guitar. And, but I didn't want to sell it. And I got, he got to ask what I wanted for it. And... I got with my granny and I said, I'm going to just price this thing so astronomical high that it'll run him off and get rid of it. And I told him, well, for this thing, I'd have to have $500 for it. And uh, which back at that time was a pretty big bunch of money. I mean, I had to walk everywhere when I didn't have a car or anything. And, uh, and he played on it a little while. Then uh, he and the moonshiner left. And I told granny, let it work. I got rid of him, you know. And the very next evening, when I went down there, I had just got there and here, that fella came back by himself. We were really worried about him in because he wasn't with the fella we knew. <laughs> and uh, we, me and my granny was both keeping an eye on him. He wanted to play that guitar some more, and he sat down and picked it and played on it a while. And he said, well, I, I think I'll just take a guitar. And he had five $100 bills in his shirt pocket and gave them to me. And that's more money than I'd ever seen or heard tell of. And, uh, and... I hated to lose my guitar, but I told my granny, I said, Lord, if I make money like this, this is what I'm going to do. And uh, so I, I, I took that, and as bad as I needed a car or something, I took that money and bought me a router so I could trim that binding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
and, uh, and some painter clamps, and I still have that old router today, and that was 1968. And, uh, and the old routers had a many a set of bearings and brushes put in it, but it still works, and I, I still use it to cut my grooves around the guitar body because it's, it's a good one. It works. Had little pincher clamps that I still have today that I use and, and a shopsmith machine. You know, $500, you can get a lot of stuff with it back in. And uh, so I've got some of those machines and tools that I still have, and that sort of get, got me the idea that, uh, and that I could build guitars and keep doing it and still have till today. And uh, that, uh, that old guitar, of course, he took it and traded it right off to another bunch of moonshiners, and I would see it at festivals and fiddlers' convention I'd go to. I'd see it sitting in the rain up against a pickup truck, and <laughs> and I worried about it, something awful, but I was afraid to say anything to him about it. But eventually, that old guitar showed back up, and somebody left-handed had it for a long time and almost wore a hole in it up here where it didn't have a pick guard. And it's been really worn and played a lot. But 25 years after that or something, it came in for repairs, and uh, I had more money than I did back at that time, and I was able to buy it back. And I have that old guitar in my collection now. It's got a bullet hole in it and uh, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, and, but it still plays and sounds good, and, and I use it sometimes. And so it's a pretty, pretty cool old guitar. And if you ever come by the shop, I'll show it to you. That's pretty <laughs> Somebody had to offer Jane $25,000 for her guitar for her to decide to make them for the rest of her life. It was, times have changed, Wayne. I guess, I guess so, but that's probably no bigger than that was to me then. Though, you know. okay. What you got to fiddle for us? Well, should we do Madeline's Reel? That, that's a good one. That's another one of your homemade tunes, isn't it? It's another homemade tune. This was in honor of a woman's 100th birthday. And she was of Irish descent. Do this for old Jim down here. He's not quite 100 yet, I don't think, but he's <laughs> not missing it far, I don't think. <laughs> it, in fact, you know, Wayne said that when we play for special occasions, I'll, I'll write a tune. I, I like to have reasons to write write tunes and and um, another thing we do a lot when we play out for not we play for benefits or play for special organizations and I'll offer to write a tune um, a dedication I, I do keep my copyrights but um, you know you never know when when uh, they may need music in a major film but um, but we will dedicate a tune for a special event or f um, if somebody makes a substantial donation to nonprofit organizations that we support. So uh, we'll play this tune. This is Madeline's Reel. But if there's anyone here tonight that would like a tune written as a dedication for an event, um, I'm happy to do that if you make a total tax-deductible donation to this wonderful Stokoa Arts Center, particularly, now there's an extra catch here, to support their youth music program. They have, uh, they were the second jam program. I started the first in Allegheny County and Lynn, and Lynn Shields called me and wanted to start one here. So. Um, if anyone here wants to make a tax-deductible donation for $750 or more to Stico Arts Center, see me after the show, and we'll we'll make a plan. I can't. It can't be due before Christmas. I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm kind of booked up right now, but but uh, by Christmas. Okay. Okay. This one. You wrote in honor of Madeline's 100th birthday. That sounds better in tune. Sorry. Oh, it's close enough. That's it's old time. It's old time music. Enough, yeah.
I should have said what you get for that is a CD of the tune. And now that I'm going to school and learning how to read music and write music, um, a transcription of just the melody of the tune. So, and a chord chart. A little bit of big side while you got your Okay. Head. sure I remember the, all the chords to this one or not, but it's another one of her waltzes she wrote for somebody's wedding, and, and it happened to be in April. She called this the April Bride. I'll see if I can remember the chords. I'm in big trouble if I don't. <laughs> and I hope I can remember the tune. One of my favorite waltzes of hers. So.
Beautiful job, pretty tune and good fiddling, You're making my fiddle sound good. There. Yeah, it does sound good. That's a that's a thrill, always a thrill to me. You can imagine as an instrument maker to see somebody play one of my instruments and and somebody like uh, Young Presley or Helen or anybody. Young makes, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, made me forget what I was even going to say. Oh, I know. I, uh, my little festival I have up in up in Virginia, always the third Saturday in June. We'd love to see a nice bunch of folks like y'all up there. And uh, this this year, I can usually uh, trade one of my guitars for somebody famous to come play. This year it was Ricky Skaggs, and uh, and he's been playing that guitar. Jim just told me he saw him on TV and and he's and I know he's. I've heard of him playing it. I saw it on Fox nationwide TV when he got inducted in the Hall of Fame he had that guitar there playing it and so that's that's pretty exciting to see something like that or a few years ago uh, Vince Gill came up and did it and it's amazing what you can trade a guitar for sometimes <laughs> and uh, so it's always exciting to see uh, people like that play them but it's almost more exciting to see Helen or Presley or Parker Hastings or some of those young folks that play so good and that's a, that's a pretty exciting thing to go on there. How about wheels? You haven't done that one for a while. We'll play maybe. a little bit of that. And we also, you got your capo, we could do a Rose of My Heart. Somebody asked for that tune. Uh, might have to go step look into for the back it room for a minute. Get it. Well, I'll play this tune. I'll even figure out where your capo is, maybe. <laughs> This is even I learned from another guitar hero of mine, Sam, Sam McGee. Uh, he was an uh, old fella. He's 83 years old at the time. I was around him to learn this tune. And he played on the Grand Ole Opry. And I used to work in Groon's guitar shop a week or two uh, at Spells. You know, I'd go work two weeks, and then go back to rugby in my shop. But I did that off and on for a few years. And I'd get, I got to know him. and, and uh, he always, they let him play a tune on the old flat top about 20 after 12 every Saturday. And this is a tune that he played uh, about every other time that he played on Call of Wheels. Helen's going to go look for a capo, I think. Yep. And uh, well, I guess I could tell you the story or something. Well, maybe I'd get by with this one. Uh, I had uh, my cousin Tex was uh, the only kid I had to play with when I was growing up. He was my age, and my brother and sister were both 9 and 11 years older than me. And, 
and uh, they watched after me quite a bit, but they wasn't that much fun to play with. It's too old. But uh, my cousin Tex was the same age, and we played and wrestled and and uh, got along good. We was, we did every kind of games like kids do, and and uh, we'd have wrestling matches. And his me and him both were always sort of puny and sickly and have sore throat and stuff all the time and and most of the time I could whip him you know in a good wrestling match but they took him when he was about 10 or 11 and had his tonsils taken out and uh, and when they did that he started growing like a weed and next thing you know he's foot taller than me and that stopped that wh whipping stuff and wrestling but <laughs> we're still big buddies but I was going to tell you the story about that tonsils deal they got ready to uh, to do that. I mean, I had the sore throat too all the time, but I wouldn't tell my parents about it because I was afraid they'd do that to me. <laughs> you know, and, but anyway, they, got, they set an appointment and got old Tex ready to go get his tonsils taken out, and they had the day set. So when he went over to do it, the doctor came out to talk to his parents, and this is back in the old days, you know, and, and they come in and he said, you know what we should do? I tell you something, you know, we got to put him to sleep to put his take his tonsils out. And what we should do while you put him to sleep, you don't even have to tell him nothing about it. It'll be over with and done when he wakes up. We should circumcise him while he's, we got that doing that. So that's what they did. His parents said, go ahead and do that. And uh, then I was worried about Tex. I didn't see him for two weeks. And uh, he had uh, come, back, come back to school. And... I, uh, and uh, I come run up to him said, how are you doing? said, how was getting your tonsils taken out? I said, well, I'm, I'm fine now, but said, I was pretty bad shape, you know, when, we, when they, I got back out of that hospital. But said, let me tell you something that we didn't know. <laughs> said, them tonsils ain't where we thought they was. <laughs> I see old Tex every once in a while when I ask him about that. Should we... Don't should do a good love song after a story like that. <laughs> see if we can redeem ourselves. It's hard for me to see, but is there anybody here who's been married to the same person for at least 50? 50, 50 years. All right. I can see at least... Right here on the front five. row. And I see some in the back, too. Well, this... this song is especially for you guys. We're the best partners this world's ever seen. Never as close as can be But somehow I never find time in between To tell you what you are to me You are the rose of my heart You are the love of my life Flower not Fading nor falling apart If you're cold, let my love make you warm Rose of my heart that fall from your eyes Your smile is the sun come to earth for a day Brighten my blackest of skies You are the rose of my heart You are the love of my life Flower not fading nor falling 
If you're weak, let my love make you strong Rose of my Times, what do I care? Nothing I'd change if I could. The tears and the laughter are things that we share. Your hand in mine makes all things good. You are the rose of my heart. You are the love of my life. Flower not fading nor falling apart You're my harbor, life's restless storm Rose of my heart You are the rose of my heart You are the love of my life You're my harbor, life's restless storm, rose of my heart. Thank you. Beautiful town. Pretty job there. Well, let's see. Might pick you a guitar tune. Something, uh, driving down here today, we went right by a sign that said Montreat. I know that's where Dr. Billy Graham lived. Sometimes, I mean, he's one of the most wonderful people that ever lived, I think, and my mom would set up till 8 o'clock if she had to. To, 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 hear, to hear him preach and really appreciated him and everything. But even, even somebody as wonderful as that, I, I know a little bit of a funny story about him. He was uh, coming, he'd been out on one of those cruise, crusades and come into the Charlotte airport and he always had a, a driver that uh, hauled him around in a limo thing. And, and uh, he's, uh, they got stuck in traffic like he always do around Charlotte there, trying to get out of the airport, and he was coming back, back toward home. And uh, they couldn't get out of there and stuck, and he was talking to his driver, his chauffeur, and said, you know, you guys have driven me around all these years, and everything, he said, I've never gotten to drive. And said, that's something I've always really wanted to do. I'd really like to do that. And his chauffeur said, well, sir, you just have at it. I'll show you some things about this car, and if you want to drive, you go ahead and drive. And he showed him some things about it, and, and they took off up the road. Next thing you know, they're out on that parkway that's named after him, you know, to, to get out of the airport on. And he's having a great time. He was going along there and after a while, and, and the chauffeur told him, you just go ahead and drive, I'll get in the back. And that's what, that's what he did. And he's having a good time, and, and he noticed back behind him, looked back there, there's blue lights. And uh, the chauffeur said, I forgot to tell you about speed limit stuff, said you're going too fast, said you've got caught speed and said you can't do nothing, you've got to pull over. And he said, all right. And so he pulled over and, and, uh, and it was a brand new cop, a rookie, brand new policeman, just a new fella that uh, just starting out, he already had his flipping over his ticket book, you know, when he walked up beside and he walked up beside that limo and looked in there and saw Billy Graham driving. He said, sir, if you don't mind, just uh, sit here a minute. I think I need to call in the headquarters. And he went back to his car and called his sergeant up. He said, now what is our policy when we stop somebody really famous? And uh, his sergeant got all over him and said, don't tell me you stopped the mayor again. And he said, nope, nope, it's bigger than that. And, 
bigger than the mayor, please don't tell me you stopped the governor. I said, nope, it's even bigger than that. And he got all over him and said, bigger than the mayor, bigger than the governor, who in the world have you stopped this time? And he said, I don't rightly know for sure, but I think it might be Jesus Christ because he's got Billy Graham driving for him. <laughs> the double eagle there. How about steps down? Okay. I love to hear Helen sing this old, old time song. Actually got stirred up and sort of in this area, Bascom Lunsford at the Asheville Folk Festival a long time ago sort of discovered this tune and I think so. Helen knows more about it than I do. It's, a, it's an old time. I think it came a, across from the British Isles in the late 1800s. Um, and he, Bascom Lamar Lunsford, discovered it and got it started. And then Woody Guthrie picked it up and it became an anthem for the Great Depression. Dune called the steps then. I stood on my stepstone when school days were on, waiting for time to go by. Now that it's gone, I stand here tonight and bid my stepstone goodbye. Goodbye to my stepstone, goodbye to my home. Bless the ones that I leave with a sigh. My fields will be widening, I will be gone. To ramble this wide world alone.
hard to be parted from those that you love when reverses in fortune have come. The world's strongest heartstrings broken in twain when absent from the loved ones in home. Goodbye. To my stepstone, goodbye to my home. God bless the ones that I leave with a sigh. My fields will be widening, and I will be gone. Ramble this wide world. Stand on my doorstep at eventide now Wind whistles by with a moan Love is so far as I stand tonight Think on my stepstone and hold I to my stepstone That I leave with a sigh My fields will be whitening I will be gone This white world alone My fields will be whitening I will be gone To ramble this one Thank you. I guess we might play you a couple more tunes, and we really appreciate y'all for being such a wonderful audience tonight. And we've just had an absolute great time picking for you, and it's always cool to come out here in one of the most gorgeous parts of the world, all the beautiful mountains and stuff around here. And it's a uh, time of year is pretty, and and uh, we just enjoy being out here and especially being around y'all. You're so nice and we'd love to have you come up, visit us anytime you can. Especially and, uh, the third Saturday in June. Oh yeah, that'd be a, be a real good time. I, don't, I ain't got no idea who I can trade a guitar for next year, but uh, we'll come up with somebody. And uh, All the money from Wayne's Festival, for those of you that don't know Wayne, and, uh, and there may, are there anybody here who is hearing Wayne, for the first time tonight, clap so we can, because we can't see you. I can't see nothing. Wow. Well, well, Wayne actually is is a, as big a shot as you can be in traditional arts. I'll just put it that way. He was the 1995 recipient of the National Heritage Award, which is the highest honor given to a traditional artist in this country, and we're. And he is known not only as a wonderful musician, which you have witnessed tonight, but for the beautiful instruments that he crafts that are in demand worldwide. And Wayne still does not charge twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars for his instruments. That's what happens after people have had the patience to wait 20 years to get one of his instruments. Um, but what he does, he likes to make instruments for very talented young people and for musicians who can't really afford great instruments. And he puts on a festival every June 
uh, in Grayson Highlands State Park, which is a beautiful, beautiful park. And all the money from that festival goes into scholarships to support youth music programs, programs that get traditional Appalachian music back in the hands of children in the Appalachians. What a concept. And um, also some talented individuals. And so he builds guitars. Would you build six or seven this year for the festival? Had to do seven this year to pay all the bills. <laughs> Uh, he has a guitar competition in the morning and gives away a guitar as a prize for first place. And it's a killer competition. He'll have national champions competing to get one of his guitars. And he builds guitars for the headliners of the festival. And uh, Ricky Skaggs actually volunteered to come this year after he saw Vince Gill's guitar a couple of years ago. <laughs> Yeah, he could sell that guitar for $30,000, $40,000 next week. He knows that. But, um, but Wayne gives all of this. So um, the third Saturday in June is his festival. It's always a great festival, and you would all be very, very welcome. I saw a good-looking young fella back here tonight. He's had one of the T-shirts on, so that's, that's, that's good. That's pretty cool. That's good. And, oh, and if you come to the festival... They raffle off a guitar every year for the scholarship fund, and um, so you have a shot at winning a guitar that day. He doesn't pre-sell. You can't pre-sell. There are all these rules for nonprofits. You can't pre-sell the tickets, but they can be sold that day. And I think you raised twenty-five thousand dollars this year yeah. on the raffle. Yeah, that's tickets cool. are fifty. Tickets are fifty dollars, and. Uh, that way you got a pretty good chance. There's not that many of them in there. That's right. That's a, be the easiest way to get one, but one of the hardest too, I guess. You know, yeah, you it depends be on your luck. Yeah. yeah. so much. We appreciate that. We might play you another one here. Maybe a tune and a half if Helen would sing a little this one. I don't know. It's one we don't do very much. What about a little bit of Lady Be Good? Oh, yeah, this is, well, they've lasted this long.
to me I am so awfully misunderstood Old lady, be good to me Oh, please have some pity I'm all alone in this fair city I tell you, I'm just a lonesome Babe in the woods, oh lady be good to me Thank you. To play you a little bit of this, my favorite guitar tune. I usually play it last, and steel guitar rag. It's one of my favorite tunes, and it's in a big old E chord, and it's my guitar's favorite tune. I think because it's two E strings on there, and I think it's easy for it. So, uh, thank you to tunes. everybody here at the Stagoa Valley Center, and especially to Jeremy for the sound, and all of you for for coming. Thank you. And thank, thank you. A little bit of the steel guitar rag, and we'll see you next time.
y'all so much. Thanks to Helen White for coming all the way down here and picking parts and singing and fiddling. And thanks y'all for coming. Thank y'all. Make a fuss like that, we, we'll have to, we may be out of tunes, but we'll, we'll figure out something. We appreciate that so much. Can get your fiddle up and let's do it. A little bit of, uh, bit of whiskey for breakfast.
Pacquiao.